Hi everybody. So GIS is about connecting databases to maps, connecting databases to places, and we can't do that without a coordinate system. The reason we have so many different kinds of coordinate systems is because it's very tricky and specific to uh, create a measurement, a way of measuring place at all the different places on the Earth's surface, and here's why. The Earth isn't exactly round, but it is definitely a curved surface. Um, what, we, what we measure it with is something called the geoid, which is basically a stand-in for sea level. Um, it's very difficult to measure you know, what a level sea is, because there's no such thing. It's, um, the level of the sea is different everywhere on the globe, and it's different in part because gravity is different everywhere on the globe. Gravity is something that we can measure very specifically, um, and it doesn't change in the same way that sea does, the sea level does. So we use the Earth's gravity um, as our equal surface um, as a proxy for sea level. And so what we need to do really is just model this curved surface in the X and Y, meaning latitude and longitude, um, and then use the, this gravitational field as our Z, or our sea level. So all spatial data has to start there. It has to start with some mathematical model that represents the Earth's curved surface. From there, we can choose to flatten that curved surface, but that's always a second step. It's a mathematical second step. So first, we're going to pick a model that's, that's appropriate for us in our area of interest, and we're going to figure out a mathematical um, representation of the curved surface. Then we can project it. These are two of the most common projections that we use, conical and cylindrical. But basically, it's just taking this curved surface and projecting it onto a flat surface that can be, you know, quote unquote, unrolled um, to represent the Earth um, on a flat Cartesian coordinate system, so your classic XY coordinate system. So there are two types of coordinate systems. Geographic, those are the curved models. That's where we start, because the Earth is quote-unquote round. And then there are projected coordinate systems. This is a second step. All spatial data starts with a geographic coordinate system, a curved model, and then we can project it. All data does not have to have a projection. It does have to have a geographic coordinate system. So let's talk about those for a minute. Another word for a geographic coordinate system is a datum. It's just terminology, um, but what we're talking about is a model of the curved surface. Um, latitude and longitude is how they're measured, but there's very much more than one set of latitude and longitude. What's consistent is that the units of a geographic coordinate system are degrees, because we're always measuring that angle from the center of the Earth out to you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 degrees north or south, and then east or west of the prime meridian, but it's an angle, so the units have to be degrees. The surface is curved. We're not putting a flat Cartesian grid on this. Um, the most common ones that we use in North America are the North American datum of 1983, or NAD83, and then we have a global one called the World Geodetic Survey, or WGS 1984. So. North American Datum of 1983 is a mathematical model that maps the curved surface over North America. South America has its own datum. Europe has its own datum. Um, most continents have their own datum. And then there are common global ones. This is what your phone uses, for example, in Google Earth. So again, in ARC, you'll see geographic coordinate systems, and if you open that up, you'll see there are lots and lots and lots of them. That's because every place on the Earth has a specific curved model that is very accurate at that location. Okay, the other type of data, or sorry, coordinate system is called a projection. And so, just for an example, a conical projection is where you would take the shape of a cone and there's an imaginary light bulb inside here, and it's projecting it out onto this flat or conical screen, which then can be unrolled. And it would look like this. And you guys have seen this in your first coordinate system lab. Now, this is a conic projection focused on Europe. It's right in the middle. So this is a European conical projection. Um, you wouldn't use this map here or here or here. Look at how distorted it is. You're going to zoom in and focus it here. It's still projected over the whole cone. 
but this is, you can see, specific and very little um, shape distortion in Europe. All right, the units for projected coordinate systems are always going to be linear or planar. Meters is the most common. Sometimes you'll see it in feet. But that's because this is an XY Cartesian grid because we're working on a flat surface now. And in small areas, it's going to be just your X direction and your Y direction. Projections have two aspects to them, two facets. One, they cover a specific geographic extent. So know that we've already started with the datum, but now our projection has to be chosen to fit a certain area. This one is a European conic projection, and so it's focused here. It still projects the whole globe, but we're going to use it right here, and the, lo the lowest amount of distortion is in Europe for this, for this projection. The second facet is the thing that it's preserving. So hopefully you've learned in lecture that whenever you flatten a curved surface, you have some stretching or distortion. We can work to um, minimize the distortion for usually one of these things, sometimes two. Area, distance, shape, or angle. You know, like keeping north always up on the map. So a geographic extent and what it's preserving. And so when we asked you in the lab, Pretend that we are um, interested in measuring migration distances from Alaska to Florida. You have two things you need to address. What's the geographic extent? It's not the contiguous U.S. It's going from Alaska to Florida. That needs to be a North American projection. And then, what are we trying to preserve? Are we measuring areas? No, we talked about migration distances. All right, we're not concerned with the shape or whether or not north is up. If you pick a contiguous U.S., that's going to work, but as you move away from the contiguous U.S., distortion is going to increase, just like you can see the distortion is increasing as we move away from Europe. So you're going to want to choose a coordinate system that's really designed for the whole area of interest. Some common coordinate system projections, I should say, not coordinate systems, but projections. North American equal area conic. So this is telling you that it's focused on North America, it's preserving area measurements, and it's a conic uh, projection. Another one might be U.S. contiguous Lambert conformal conic. You don't have to worry about things like Lambert. If you're ever curious about this, just Google it. Um, but this means the, the focus is over the lower 48. Uh, Lambert is the name of the person who came up with this. Conformal means it's preserving shape, and it's, again, a conic projection. So if you, if you ever are looking at a coordinate system and you're not sure what it does, if it doesn't specifically say, oh, here's the area, here's the metric that it's preserving, just Google it. It's the best way to, to figure some of these things out. Okay, so in the projected coordinate system folder, again, you see a ton of options. That's because it's first letting you pick um, your geographic extent or there's this great uh, projection type called universal transverse Mercator, UTM. This is what we use the most in Utah. Um, why? Because Utah fits inside one of the zones. So this is a global map showing all 60 UTM projections. Each one is an independent individual projection. For the United States, this is how they lay out. So like I said, Utah falls within uh, UTM zone 12. That's really lucky. Nevada's really lucky. Idaho, not so much. But you can customize coordinate systems, and Idaho went and created the Idaho Transverse Mercator and put their, um, uh, the edges of the um, coordinates, or sorry, the projection are the border of, are the borders of Idaho, and then their, their central meridian right, runs right down the middle of the state. But we're pretty lucky here. Um, so don't freak out by all the numbers on this. This is showing you the, like the northern part of one projection. It's zone 28, so this is UTM zone 28. And um, it's just showing you that the equator is the origin for the um, northing coordinate. So you can see y equals zero meters. If, um, so remember in latitude and longitude, we talk about latitude and longitude, and it's in degrees. But with um, projections, we have x and y. And in UTM projections, we call them northings and eastings. Um, if we are one, if our y is one meter, that means we're one meter north of the equator. The trickier one is the middle or the central meridian of each UTM zone is right down the middle. So
So that's kind of like the prime meridian, but each one of these projections has its own prime meridian. It's called a central meridian. And it's given just a made-up number of 500,000 meters. And that's because we don't want to deal with negative numbers. So like with um, latitudes, we have um, you know, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. With longitudes, we have negative you know, 10, 20, 30 as we move west. We don't want to deal with negative numbers if we can handle it on a Cartesian grid. So they give it a false number of um, 500,000. If you have an x value of 500,001, you're one meter east of the central meridian of the UTM zone you're working in. And if you're 499,999,000 meters <laughs> easting, then you're one meter west of the central meridian. And so if you see a number, like for example in Utah, 4,621,000 northing, that means we're 4,621,000 meters north of the equator. It's pretty straightforward. They're really, um, once you get used to them, pretty easy to decode. Um, all right, I think that's it for UTM zones. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about is coordinate systems in general. Okay, so we've built the building blocks. The datum is the model for the curved surface. This is where we start, and all spatial data has a datum. NAT83 is very common, WGS84. A projection is just the math to flatten this curved surface. It's just math. So a type of projection, we talked about transverse mercator, we talked about cylindrical, um, conic. UTM is universal transverse mercator. It's a skinny little band of a projection. Zone 12 tells us exactly which one. That's just a projection that flattens this. So again, data cannot just have a projection. It has to have a datum. It does not have to have a projection. When you put these two things together, that's what a coordinate system is. So this semester, if we ask you what is the coordinate system of a data set, you can't just say UTM Zone 12 because you can have WGS84 UTM Zone 12, you can have North American Datum of 1927 um, UTM Zone 12, and those are all different coordinate systems. So the coordinate system has to reflect both. Some coordinate systems don't include these in the title, but um, generally you get a sense, North American Datum of 1980, uh, North American Equal Distant Conic or something like that, you get a sense of it. Um, most important, if the data is projected, if you tell us just NAT83, you're not representing the whole coordinate system. So let's take a look at um, actual data in ARC really quick. Okay, here's a map of the contiguous United States. Um, here's another one. They're sitting directly on top of each other, so they're mapped in the same place. If I look at the coordinate system for the state outlines, um, it says it's got a projected coordinate system. USA, contiguous, Lambert, conformal, conic. That's the coordinate system. It tells you it's projected. It tells you the projection itself is Lambert, conformal, conic. That's implicit in the name of the coordinate system, so that works out pretty well. If we scroll down, it says linear unit, meter. But what's this? Geographic coordinate system. It has both. What? The datum is North American datum of 1983. And look, that's repeated here as well. GCS stands for Geographic Coordinate System, North American 1983. So basically the datum and the geographic coordinate system are the same name. It tells you that the units are degrees and the prime meridian is the Greenwich. Okay, that's great. So if I asked you, what's the coordinate system for this data set, are you going to tell me it's this or are you going to tell me it's this? And the answer is you're going to tell me this. All data has to start with a datum, all spatial data. But if we go ahead and do the math to flatten it, then this trumps, this overrides or overwrites this. So the geographic coordinate system is where it started, and that's the model that uh, the data is based on. And then the projected coordinate system flattens that. But the datum is still there. This is still how we modeled the curved surface, and then we did some math to flatten it. But this now is the, is the current and existing coordinate system for this data. If you ever see the units of meters associated with a data set, it is a projected data set, period. If you see units of degrees associated with the data set, you need to look 
and make sure there aren't units of meters. If it's just degrees, then it's a geographic coordinate system. All right, let's take a look at this guy. Turn that on. It's completely, perfectly overlaid with the other one. It has a different coordinate system. So here, I'm at the very top, uh, geographic coordinate system, WGS 1984. So this is the global model, but it sits perfectly over the other data set because ARC can do that on the fly. As long as it's assigned correctly, then ARC can um, overlay things correctly. So here's the big biggest difference. The extent of this data, it's saying it goes from 49 decimal degrees to 24 decimal degrees. So we're 24 degrees above the equator down here, and we're 49 degrees above the equator, and then um, east and west. Decimal degrees means this is a geographic coordinate system. If we look at the other one, you'll see something very different. From top to bottom, we are 1,407,609 meters, and the bottom, we are negative, sorry, I'm squinting because I can't read this very well. <laughs> anyway, negative 1,499,118 meters. This coordinate system does not use the equator as its um, latitudinal origin. So it has another origin that runs through the middle of the country. Um, but these big numbers that are up in the meters, in the millions, have units of meters. This is how you can tell this is a projected coordinate system. You would never see units of meters on a geographic coordinate system. So this extent box is really handy for understanding whether or not you're dealing with a projected or a geographic coordinate system. All right. Good luck with that. Questions, let me know.